Welcome back, my YouTube peeps. Once again, the 05 Alpha XT 2.5 liter turbocharged edition. So, you know, we're jumping right into this. If you want more detailed walkthrough, I got a bunch of videos before this, getting up to this point. So, I'm just holding this hose out of the way right now from the uh, radiator. So, uh, in the last video, you know, we got the timing belt cover off. Um, that was kind of a hassle. Still need to fix that once the belt's off. So, uh, what you're going to do is, uh, once you get the cover off, you're going to reinstall your 22mm um, crankshaft pulley bolt. Um, this is a clockwise engine that pretty much always applies except for Hondas. So, always rotate the engine clockwise. Uh, going the other way can cause uh, problems. Engine's not meant to go that way. So, what you're going to do is you're going to get that bolt on there. You are going to spin this clockwise until this mark right here. Yours may not be white. You know, that just means that someone's been in here and done this before and marked it white. There's a notch mark right there. Note, this is the turbocharged models. I have two camshafts on each side. This will be slightly different than the non-turbocharged models. The non-turbocharged models, you follow the little block on here, I guess. But um, something that is missing here you might be like, hey... Mine doesn't look like that. That's because there's a cover. It goes right there. I took that cover off. We'll get to that in a moment. So, uh, pretend that cover's still on. Spin this clockwise, 22 millimeter bolt, socket, ratchet. You'll see that that mark back there aligns with that one. And those both, looking dead center on the car, need to line up with this little notch right there on the oil pump. Now, there are two positions for this because the crankshaft turns twice for every single rotation of the camshafts. Math. So, if you get this and that lined up with the oil pump and you come over here and you see your timing marks, which on your camshafts there's going to be a single mark and a double mark 180 degrees off. Double mark, single mark. You're going to come over here and be like, my marks don't line up at all because this is supposed to line up with the notch in the timing cover there. These two marks are supposed to line up two to two, and then your one on the bottom lines up with one on the bottom of the cover. Same thing over here. You're going to have a single mark, single timing mark right up there, around flashing the light. Then on the bottom, i get a good angle on this. You can see the double marks right there. There's a the double marks on the intake cam. And on this exhaust cam, there's a single mark on the bottom. The two double marks need to line up. The two single marks need to line up with the respective uh, covers. And you need your crankshaft to line up. So like I said, two positions. You get here and your cams are all misaligned. Rotate this 180, or not 180, 360 degrees. Full rotation, clockwise. Come around and huzzah, those will line up. But then you might say, Mason, 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 my right side still doesn't line up. I've got my crank perfectly aligned. I've got my passenger side perfectly aligned, especially if you can fit your head down there in the in-between to see that. It's pretty tight, easier to check the bottom, make sure that lines up. But my driver's side, it just, it just won't align. I'll come to you and say, that's okay. It's meant to do that, which you might say, but that doesn't make any sense. Ah, but it does, per the wise words of a well-aged Rastafarian man named Marcel, who I have great respect for, who has been a Subaru fanatic for most of his life, uh, been a professional Subaru certified master technician, same for Volkswagen, runs his own independent shop, great guy, you should meet him sometime. Come meet me in Portland, Oregon. The driver's side on even the single cam model or the double cam model is where you will gain the slack from the belt. As the belt over time will slightly get longer and your cams will get slightly out of alignment, this will happen. Now, are you saying, don't align these when you put the new belt on? Oh, absolutely not. When you put the new belt on, these need to line up. 
This is just because this belt is way past due. Like, 30k past due. But Mason, I thought you were really good at taking care of your cars. Yeah, but I had a kid. I got a full-time job. It's not a real full-time job. It's like an overtime job I don't get paid overtime for. Whole shabam. So we're doing it now. That's that. You need to take these and line them up after you get the belt off. But, uh, let's jump into the shop manual to give you a, well, I broke one of my lights, give you a better idea what you're looking at. We are looking at the exploded view of the timing assembly. Welcome to my workbench. Of the turbocharged model. So you got your two upper intakes, your two lower exhausts, timing cover, pulley, all the idlers and sprockets and stuff. Yada, yada, yada. So, where was I even going with this? Oh, I was going down the yeah, rabbit hole, something, something. Don't use this video for if you're taking the belt off and putting the old one back on. I'm not going to go into all the stuff. You have to do that. That's time. It's time. Time I don't have. This is for new belt installations. We're putting on a new belt, we're putting on new idlers, and all that good stuff. So, we've got our passenger side cams lined up. We've got our crank and oil pump lined up. Driver's side's a little off. That's okay. Oh, that's where I was going with this. Locking tool. We need a cam locking tool. This is designed to go in there. Bing, bang, boom. Oh, and they're magnetic. That's cool. Uh, this is a Company 23. Couldn't find any other brand, and this came from the highly suggested words of wisdom of Marcel. Uh, you can get one of these, or you can get two. But the instructions, the manual, say two. Ah, but in the top dead center position of this engine, only the driver's side cams have sprung force. That means they are balancing on the valve springs right now. If I undo that belt and barely move either of those cams, they will spring out of place. When I say spring, it's instant. They'll jump 90 degrees. And that can cause the valves to do some unhappy things with the pistons. So we're not going to do that. Unless you're me and you prove a 30-year veteran of Subaru's wrong in the fact that I can do this without a locking tool. I'm not going to this time. I'm going to make my life easy because that took me like three hours to align that thing perfectly without a locking tool. You can get two of these. They're 50 bucks a piece. <clears throat> I got one because one, I'm poor, and two, I don't need to. The passenger side is unsprung. If I undo the belt, I can rotate these by hand. <clears throat> That's really getting into the meat and potatoes early. So, what you need to do you're all lined up. Uh, turbocharged models. In my previous video, I was wrong. The little belt guides I was talking about. These guys. These go into the timing cover housing. Get my light on it. Right there. And they got two wee little bolts in them. Those are your belt guides. They're only on the turbocharged models to keep the belt from jumping as much when you smash the gas. There are three of these. Upper passenger side, lower passenger side, lower driver side. They are held in by two each, Loctited Allen keys. Which Allen key are these? A number five Allen key. I suggest getting the socket versions and not doing this with an actual Allen key, like an actual generic Allen wrench. Sockets are much easier. So there are six of those bolts, three of those guides. I set mine up top in the positions I took them out of. They're identical for all intents and purposes. You can use any of the three in any three positions. And then as well, there are two 10 millimeter bolts, one, two, that hold on the belt guide over the sprocket. I just put those bolts back. You know how I work. You've watched a few of these videos. I like to put bolts back where I can, where I won't lose them. And then, we start getting into the uh, disassembly process. So like I said, you should put your locking tool on now, which is not what I'm going to do, but you should. 
I know it sounds crazy. Don't listen to the do-it-yourselfer, but listen to the do-it-yourselfer. I've done this enough. I know what's going to happen with those cams. Take your rocking tool. Put it on now. I set it on the ground. Ugh. Take it. These free spin. This bolt just slides into this housing. Take this one. That one. And just kind of spin them in there. It's a little hard to do one-handed. Does anyone else think this video is getting long? Maybe. Well, you know, for all intents and purposes, this is easier if I take them apart first and then put them in. But I got it. Boom, it's in. Tighten these down. Uh, Company 23, these are 17 millimeter. Tighten them down. And then this will keep those from rotating. You want to be professional, professional, you'll do the other side too. But Mason, there's no cover on that one. Mine has a cover. Oh, yes. The ACVI cover. This little guy. It's got an O-ring on the back. Replace that O-ring when you take this off. Can't be reused. That has got three Phillips or uh, eight millimeter bolts on them. Uh, not Loctited. Lock washered. Three of them, take them out, take your cover off. Mine was a little stuck, as yours probably will be too. So what I did is I took a very small flathead screwdriver, I pressed it against the very top of this, and gave it a very light tap with a small hammer. Tap, 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 comes free, pull it off. It's gonna be stuck because it's been compression fitted with a gasket and oily surface. There you go, now you're caught up to speed where I am. So, we're lined up. We've got our locking tool on. We've got our one cover off. If you're doing two locking tools, you've got your other cover off. You are going to loose the 14 millimeter bolt down here in the idler pulley number one position. Yes, that's what it's called, idler pulley number one position. This releases the tension on the belt. You'll take that guy fully out. Get your 14 millimeter on your idler sprocket number one. Yes, it's called the idler sprocket number one. Take that out. And that will allow a bunch of tension to be pressed out of your uh, tensioner. Easy, easy. All these are 14 millimeter. Super simple. You'll take your 14 millimeter out of your tensioner and take that guy out. If you are reusing this tensioner, as the tensioners can be reused for the first timing belt replacement, you can put these on a table vise, close the pin, close that pin back up, Put a screw or a nail or something in there to hold it in place and install it back in later and then pull that out. I actually suggest a uh, 5 30 seconds drill bit works really well. It's much less flexible than screws small enough to go in here or nails. <sighs> and then you will be able to fully remove the belt, which I will do right now. And like magic. It is done. So, I got my uh, tiny belt tensioner out, my idler sprocket number two, my idler, idler sprocket number two, idler pulley number one. Belt came right off. If you're just doing a belt replacement, belt goes right back on. Double check your alignment marks. Um, that's pretty much it. If you're doing a full water pump, You'll go through and you will take out one, two, three, and four. I believe it's only four. Unless there's a fifth one down in there. Can't quite see, I can't remember. Give me a second. There's a fifth one right down in there. That'll be your uh, five water pump. Ten more bolts. Ten, ten mil? Yeah, ten mil. All right, I'll get those five out. One. Ooh. 
One, two, three, four, five. And that guy will come right out. And then put in the new one, RTV. I'm not going to go into that right now. This has been a pretty stressful repair. And if you've noticed, everything's kind of a mess in here. Bad juju. Belt's been shredding. This is a long video, guys. I hope it was helpful. Um, I'm actually going through and doing cam seal and uh, crank sprocket um, seal replacement, too, actually. So I'm going to go do that and probably call it a night. Thanks for watching. Sorry this was kind of a low energy video. I just wanted to get it done. I've got some other cars lined up to do some stuff. But thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll talk to you later.